Greetings, greetings. Happy Wind Down Wednesday, everybody. Um, this is another edition of In Conversation. Today, in honor of the first Wednesday of summer, I am going to be sitting down with the amazing celebrity chef, Chef Lean. You may have seen her on Chopped. She won an episode of Chopped. She has been a celebrity chef. She hosts her own series, Real Life Cooking. And today, the beginning of our session, she's actually gonna walk me through making a rose spritzer. So if you saw the ingredients and you got them, get ready, we're gonna head over to the kitchen in a minute. But first, let me go ahead and lock in Chef Lean. So, hope you guys had a good day. It has been a day for me. I'm a little whew, hot, it's been kind of hectic. But, um, hey. glad to Hey, Chef Lean, how are you? I'm good, we have the same hairstyle. <laughs> That's so funny. We do. Yeah. It's been a day. And I was like, I'm so hot. What am I going to do? How do I do this? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I had my hair in twists, but then it was like too frizzy. So I was like, well, let me swoop this side back. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot. Oh, my goodness. My screen turned. Whoops. All right. There we go. Okay. So how's your day going? I was just telling you when my day is kind of in a day. I've been running around a lot. <laughs> Uh, I got a lot done, and then it was like the day was going slow, and then all of a sudden it was like five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. So this happy hour rose spritzer is right on time because <laughs> Let I me. sit down and have a nice little cocktail. I'm like rearranging because you know I only do lives in my kitchen, so I decided to set up my whole little bar situation in the kitchen. Of course. Okay, let me see how this angle is. Hey, everyone who's joining, thank you so much. I found celebrity chef, Chef Lean. We are about to make our rose spritzers before we get into conversation. Feel free to drop comments and questions in the comment section, as those questions. Uh, but Chef Lean is going to give us a little taste of, this is similar, the way she's going to walk us through is similar to if you tune into Real Life Cooking. So you'll see and easy it is and let's go ahead and get started i have all of my ingredients right? okay cool are we gonna walk people through the the syrup making process just so they can see or yeah let's do okay. that in, yeah go ahead go ahead okay cool so whoa cross hitting me so we're making a rose spritzer which is literally kind of just diluted rose why would you ever want to do that um because you know it's summer you might want to drink like eight of these instead of just four glasses of wine <laughs> Fair um enough. They're also served over rice, or over rice, over ice, which makes them like cold, like a lot colder and more refreshing, especially because it's less alcohol content. And we're making this one special because we're making an actual rose for our rose spritzer, rose syrup for our rose spritzer. <laughs> yeah. So, and you can make a simple. We're basically making a simple syrup and infusing it with rose petals, which is going to give you a nice fragrant. Like almost floral, well, not almost floral flavor, but not like too much. Like if you use, um, if you don't want to make your rose syrup, you can always get uh, what is, a rose water. But that stuff is super, super potent. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever tried working with it before? Oh, not working with it, no. I may have had it in a cocktail, but nothing. <laughs> it's like super strong. Like if you're going to use that instead of the syrup, you definitely don't only need a drop. And it's not sweet at all. It just has like that floral fragrance where this is, has sugar in it. So it's sweet. So to make our syrup, it's very, very easy. All you do need to combine in a pot is the same amount of water and sugar. So I always say like a good um, measurement is about a cup, you know? Yep. Because you can also keep this syrup in the fridge for like up to a week once you strain out the rose petals. Once, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay. So we're going to put a cup of water, a cup of sugar. Nikki knows I never um, measure anything, but <laughs> you should. <laughs> And then what we're gonna do is literally take our fresh roses. Yep. And the, the better they smell, the more fragrance and floral notes they're gonna add to your syrup. Um, these, I just honestly like the color of these the best. They smell pretty good, but they're not as strong as a rose can be, right? That's the color of rose, so it's like perfect. Exactly, that's exactly, see, we're on the same note all the time. Same hairstyle, same thoughts about the flowers. <laughs> um, <laughs> So literally, you're just going to pluck the rose petals off, okay. and you're going to want to give them a rinse, uh, of course, because it's a plant that was outside, and who knows where it's been. 
But the only note I'll say about taking off the petals, and I would say probably do about two roses, okay. is you want to avoid getting any of this like little yellow pollen-y stuff inside. That's the only thing you want to avoid. Hi, TT, by the way. I just happened to see her wave. Hi. <laughs> so I a little earlier because I guess I was trying to be an overachiever. But so far, I followed correctly. I have, but I'm, I'm following in my head because sometimes I get a little lost. Oh, we have a question. Does the color of the rose matter? No, not so much the color, more just the fragrance. Uh, so if it smells better, it's probably going to add more fragrance to your actual Simpro syrup. Got it. Um, I'm going to rinse these off because I always rinse off my fruits and vegetables. And <laughs> Especially now. Exactly. I need a brain. I think. <laughs> You need a what? What did you say, Nikki? A strainer, because I know at some point I have to strain up. Yeah, I don't have one like that. Oh, yeah. This is actually, someone asked me, like, what are the top three things people should have in their kitchen that they don't have? This is one of those things. Because everyone has, uh, what is this? A colander? Yep. Yeah. But not a strainer. And a strainer has so many more uses than your colander actually okay. does. Note to self, gonna buy a strainer. <laughs> All right, so literally you're just gonna put the rose petals in the sugar and water, and then you're gonna put it on the stove and just let it kind of boil away. I was just drying off my grill pan, so that's why I took it with my thing. And it can be on any kind of heat. That looks, that looks like it'll catch more of the petals than the other okay. one. I'll use that then, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can do this on any kind of heat that you want. If you're gonna be in your kitchen watching it, you can do it on high heat. It's just gonna, it just the heat just is gonna be faster or slower. So if you do it on low heat, it's just gonna take longer to get thicker. Okay, TT says she finally bought her strainer. Good job, girl. Good job, I've only known you uh, over 10 years. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while my syrup is reducing, I'll go ahead and walk us through like how to make the drink. It's like so, so easy. Okay. Um, here is what your finished syrup is going to look like. Let's see if ours looks similar. Yeah. Ooh, mine is like way syrupy. Mine is mine is not. Actually, it's pretty good. You have a spoon to like pull it. Oh yeah, yours is super super syrupy. No, I let it cool like you said before, and maybe it cooled too much. <laughs> so that's the thing. That is a thing to look out for. Like when you're making your syrup. On, yeah. When it's hot, it's still going to look, it's going to look thicker, but it's not going to look super thick. But as it cools, it's just going to get thicker. So just to keep right. that in mind. Yeah. So mine is super thick. You wanted to see it with a spoon? It looks like this. It's like jelly. It still has some like drip to it. Yeah. It's still good. So okay. all that means is yours is going to be a lot sweeter and stronger in flavor than mine is. Okay. Um, so you might need to add less. So once you have it like this, you can leave it with the petals in there for up to like a day. You could actually even serve it with the petals in the drink because um, rose petals are edible. Yeah. I don't really like like random chunks of things in my drinks. I'm not like someone that likes blueberries and blackberries and things. So I'm going to strain mine out. So you actually honestly don't have to if you wouldn't mind. Okay. But um, like I was saying before, when you go to store this, you want to drain out the petals because it'll last a lot longer in your fridge without the petals. The petals can like go bad or mold or something like that. Add it, okay. All right, so I'm gonna strain mine with my, my fancy strainer. TT, <laughs> uh, you made the syrup by boiling half a cup or a cup of water and a cup of sugar together with our rose petals. And I'm just straining mine. Are you gonna strain yours or are you leaving your petals inside, Nikki? I'm trying to strain, but this is very thick, so we might have to keep the rose feathers this round. <laughs> Not it's, even. it's totally fine if they're there. Like, it kind of looks nice, but like I said, I'm someone that doesn't like random things in my drink, so yeah. I'm going to... I, I probably will lean that way, too. However, the way this is looking, <laughs> it's just staying right there. So, so you can actually, so do... in the strainer even, you can press the petals down. So like even more juice will come out of the petals because they've absorbed a lot of the liquid too. Note to self for next time. <laughs> I basically froze over here like it's that thick. <laughs> and then if you guys are just joining us, I started a new batch and literally all we did was put 
So this is what it looks like at the beginning. You see how droopy it is? Yep. That's As opposed to like this thicker syrup. And Nikki's is super thick. And that's okay. Totally fine. It's just stronger in flavor and sweeter in flavor. So you can take your syrup as as thick or as thin as you want to. Okay. If you kept going though, Nikki, you would have um, ended up with like rose candy, <laughs> like hard candy. <laughs> yes. Well, when I was watching it, I kept it just looked like it was regular, like water boiling. So that's why I was like, is it long enough? Is it long enough? Apparently, it was a little too long. <laughs> Uh, oh, Titi's asking how long do you boil it? Basically, depending on the how high your heat, just until it gets the right viscosity. And so that's going to take, as we we're just talking about, some guess and check, right? So the way to tell is your bubbles will actually start looking thicker and bigger and pop slower. Once yeah. your bubbles start doing that, that's a good indication that it's like almost ready. Um, I would leave it on. It, it, it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes. How long did you have yours on the stove? Did about 20, I'd say. Yeah, so 20, you're going to have a nice thick syrup, nice, thick and flavorful and sweet. And I probably did mine, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 12. Um, and so it's just a little thinner. But it works the same. I'll just need more of mine to add more of that rose or sweet flavor, and you'll need less. Cool. All right. So then the rest of this process is, like, very, very easy. Yes. Are you making a pitcher or a glass? I think... I'm going to do, I don't know, if I have a cup, it's probably more than a glass, right? If I have a cup of the syrup. Yeah, a cup is way more than a glass. So we'll use this little pitcher I have. And I, I mean, you said it's been a day. You might as well make a pitcher. <laughs> Orders a bottle of this rosé. Oh, I like that rosé. Maison Marcel. I like that one a lot. Yeah, um, I did. It's I, really good. I have this Cote de Rhone, uh I don't know. Oh, it's from New Jersey. I'm upset at it. This wine now. <laughs> I thought I had some fancy wine. You are fancy. And look, oh, mine's a product of France. Sorry. I should have known. Yeah, no. So Cote de Rhone from the region of France are my favorites. This okay. is, I don't know how they got away with this false advertising. I'm confused. <laughs> I should have known, though. It was $13.99. Yeah. should have known. Um, all right. So if you're making all of your rosé, you're yeah. going to want to just pour it in the pitcher. And then the next part is a little tr a little tricksy, right? So depending on how boozy you want your drink to be, a true spritzer has half rosé and half club soda. So, but I, you know, I, I do like my booze a little bit more than the average person. I feel like if you're, if you're drinking, you might as well go for the all-in. So I would say put like a fourth of the amount of wine that you put of club soda. Or I mean... A fourth of the club soda that you put of wine instead of half. Okay. And TT was asking where I got this Maison Marcel. I got it at the liquor store on 111th and Frederick Douglass. Nice. In Harlem. Oh, right here by my house. Yes. I mean, I don't I don't live anywhere near there for any stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Harlem. I'm going to make it by the um, glass because Chris said he would prefer his rosé uh, just plain rosé. <laughs> so I'm going to pour about a half a glass of um, rosé. Okay. And, and then I'm, again, I'm going to pour about like three fourths of the, not three fourths. I'm going to put half, 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 do you have a better way of explaining? Do you know what I'm saying? Like You're half of the amount of wine I just put in? Yes. So, and you told me to do what, a quarter of the amount? Yes. Okay. This is also a measuring cup. So I'm going to try and be a little. Oh, you can be exact over there. Yeah, I know you don't do the whole exact thing. <laughs> we'll just really, do. once you've made your first spritzer, then you can kind of play with, with the proportions that you like. Like, if you want it more boozy, less boozy, more sweet, less sweet, you can really just play with it. Okay, this is how mine looks so far, guys. A little bit of club soda with my rosé. That's how I'm Oh, I need more pink to match the rosé, too. <laughs> yes, I <You're> did. <laughs> <Yes>. Um... <laughs> And then at this point, we're going to add in, so you have about a, how much simple syrup do you have, you think? How much? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, here. I don't, you probably can't tell, though. I think you could probably add, because yours is so thick. I think you can add yeah. it all in. It's like that much. Yeah, I would add it all in. Did you taste it to see how floral it became? I did not taste it yet. I should do that first. Yes, just go ahead and taste it so you know what you're working with before you add it into your whole pitcher of wine. True. Okay. It's thick as if this was honey. Okay. 
Oh, it's good. <laughs> and it tastes like honey too. It's really okay. nice. Yeah, because you know sometimes honey, well not sometimes, honey comes from bees and flowers, so it's very floral a lot of times. So that's what you Smart. <laughs> um, so one now that you've tasted it, uh maybe just add in about half of it and then stir it and see how it feels to you. And then if you want to add more, add more. Okay, add it into the pitcher. Yep. Okay. And I think again Oh, go ahead. TT was asking if is there a way to thin it out if you feel like it's too thick. If you make it too thick, um, you can always add more water while it's still on the stove, and it'll loosen it up. Oh, so while it's hot, like mine. Yeah, are while it's hot, like for me, it'll dilute itself. So I'm gonna add about two spoons of my syrup to my glass. I'm gonna give it a stir, and then I'm gonna taste it. See how I feel about it. Mm, this is tasty. This is. This syrup is tasty. Can I also put syrup like in the bottom of the glass to help the flavor? Because it seems like it's slow to mix in the pitcher. But if I was wanting to like put it directly in my glass, could I do that? You could if you wanted. Um, it's really like it's really your preference. Like obviously, um, I mean, you said you had a day, so you deserve a pitcher. But um, if you're just making it for yourself, you could just make it glass by glass. Um, but if like you're entertaining or throwing a party, it's always probably better to just do a picture than you don't have to worry about it anymore. Right. Okay. Um, and then the last two things we're going to add are just like a slice of lemon that you're going to, I don't know, I keep looking at my knife like I don't need it. I'm going to add, not lemon, a, a little wedge of lime. Okay, great. Because I was like, I have lime. I didn't get lemon. <laughs> like literally, so I cut my lime half and I just have like this, little, like a, a quarter of a quarter of a lime. Okay, let me, let's see. Troy said, can you reheat it and add water if you need to? Yes, if it's thick. If it's too thick, you can totally do that. Yeah, if it's too thick. So we're just gonna squeeze that little lime in. You can put the <laughs> lime in. And I'm then spritzers are generally served with ice. So I'm gonna put ice in my glass. Nikki, I would suggest only putting ice in your glass, not the pitcher, because you don't wanna dilute the whole pitcher. Right. Ice will melt. Right, and TT was asking, um, is there anything else you can use the syrup for besides this? <laughs> um, you can use it anywhere you want sweetener, honestly. Uh, you could put it on like French toast, or you could put it in tea, or you can put it literally anywhere. You could use it for other alcoholic beverages. Like, I think vodka and not that, I, yeah, not a lot of my friends drink vodka, but vodka and rose syrup would probably be good. Maybe some tequilas as well, or like mezcal, maybe. Yeah. It's All right. like my lime, or it's too big. Uh, I would cut that in half again. And did you squeeze the lime when you put it in the cup? Yes. So that's gonna give it like a nice brightness as well. Okay. So I'm gonna bring over. Ooh, I'm gonna grab something that won't burn myself, and bring over you guys the syrup that's been boiling just as we made this drink, and you can see. It's starting to change a little. It's still pretty thin. It's not as thick as I want it. But you just keep going until it is thick. I'm actually going to turn it off because I think we're going to be focused on talking and I don't want to over reduce it. <laughs> I would advise not 20 minutes if you have a gas stove because this stuff is thick and it's not diluting in the rosé very much. So... <laughs> well, now you know. Also, um, you can garnish with just a couple more rose petals on top. I don't mind these on top because they're not going to get stuck in my straw the way that another, like the cooked rose petals would. Okay. And I'm going to be fancy and put a straw because I have lipstick on and I'm a lady. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a lady. I'm a lady. Um. <laughs> I did the ice, I have the lime, I put a little syrup in my glass, so I can go ahead and pour it from the pitcher. Yep, pour it into your pitcher. Here we go, guys. Mm -hmm. um, this is so pretty, I'm, I'm going to take a picture. Totally take a picture of it. Ooh. People on my Instagram are going to think all I do is drink, because lately I've just been posting drinks. <laughs> really see my rose petals. Maybe I'll throw some more in there like you did. Throw some little fresh ones in there. Lime on that to make it look fancy. 
There you go. Beautiful. Here we go. Should I also garnish on the side with like a lime or should we? You can if you want. If that makes you happy. <laughs> you don't have to, but. It's a lot of green going on, but it's festive. It's summer now, so I guess. I guess. Yeah, beautiful. I should have made, actually, I have a wine, a wine glass that fits a whole bottle of wine. I should have just made that drink in here. Okay, now you make me want a straw, so I got a little straw. Ooh, nice. All right, cheers. Oh, wait, I'll wait till you sit down. Well, I was going to, see, now I'm thinking I want to take the picture with me. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> it's too many things. Okay, so I'm almost ready to toast. Hold on. To go back to my set. I like the light better in here. It's like real happy hour when you're waiting for everyone to get their drinks, but you're just like, come yes. on, I want a little sip. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Hope you guys are toasting with us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Mm, this is good. It is good. I really like this. This is a great. This is going to be my new summer cocktail. It's really good. And it like, because you know, when it's super hot outside, wine is like really heavy. Like if you drink, if you're just drinking wine, it's really heavy. So just that little bit of club soda, um, really, it makes it a lot more drinkable. <laughs> and you're hydrating at the same time. <laughs> and you're hydrating. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, awesome. So I just wanted to talk to you in addition to this, you know, how has like you since as you know a chef you know you're a private chef you've been a celebrity chef as well a lot of your business is out and about so what has been going on since COVID for you so I was super sad on March 9th when everything happened like I was at the last time I worked no it wasn't March 9th it was March 12th and I left a client's house and that's when it was like Armageddon in New York City like everyone was like at the grocery store <laughs> like everyone thought the world was gonna end and um yeah i was really i will say the first week i was super super scared because one there's just so much uncertainty and it was like who knows what this disease is and that's when we're all binge watching like all those like contagion and like i, I don't even know all the movies chris made me watch i'm like i don't want to watch any more of these um and yeah people didn't want me in their house anymore so i literally went from making really great money like doing meal prep for people all around the city and to nothing basically so that was super super scary because since i've lived in new york which is now eight years i have i've never like i've always supported myself i've never had to like hey mom like can you please like i've never had to do that and i was like really really concerned um because even though i have been making pretty good money i wasn't being the smartest with my money all this time so it wasn't like i had so many savings <laughs> <laughs> So, and then, so I will, I will say like the first couple weeks, I was like pretty sad. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, also it was like, you know, there's still like a glimmer, like, oh, we're only going to be on lockdown for like two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> like this is going to go by really fast. Um, but then I don't know where I came up with the idea, but I did a cooking class for some of my friends from um, Martha's Vineyard. And then I was like, wait, this could really be a thing. Like, you know, people really felt uh, fulfilled when they left. They really made great dishes. We made beef and broccoli. And um, I, that's what I really like to do anyway. Like, for me, food is not just about making amazing food. It's really about, like, the process of making it and sharing the joy of the process and, like, eating it with other people. Yeah. So when I'm just cooking for people, it's not really <laughs> – it's not really, <laughs> oh, I remember now. Chris was like, hey, you should do um, cooking classes. Oh, Chris, right, Chris, of course. It was Chris's genius idea, my fiance. <laughs> um, so anyway, I, uh, I really enjoyed teaching, even though it's very different than teaching in person, because I've taught on cruise ships, I've taught at Sur La Um, because there, and I've taught in people's houses, like teaching their kids, there you are in control like you're like oh oh it's burning you can grab it whereas online you're like uh like, really? <laughs> exactly <laughs> um so it's that it comes with its own challenges yeah. but i started in april like for real like the first week and i've gotten a lot of clients that have been like private events mainly i do public and private classes 
Yep. Um, but the public or the private class has been really good. Like people gathering a group of friends for like their birthday or like a baby shower or something like that. Um, and people like it a lot more than just like your average like work happy hour, you know, because you leave with something fulfilled. You feel like you did something good. I agree. You know, I I get my dad and I. But we did a private class for Mother's Day. And really great way to be able to do an activity for Mother's Day with our mom. Even because Benique's in Brooklyn. I and her brother was in California. So it was a really cool way to like bring it all together. And so definitely kudos to you for developing that because it's been awesome. And I totally endorse, you know, if people have, like Kat said, birthdays or any other special celebration. I ha I was thinking, like, would it be a good, you know, but I think there's so many ways to apply it. And so kudos to you for moving, because I feel like you also did that very fast. So moving fast enough with everything going on to develop that, I think that's awesome. Yeah, like, I mean, I gave myself the grieving period of, oh, my God, my life is not the same. And then somehow I found it inside of me to, like, okay, this is what I'm doing. How do I do it? Because, like, literally I had to develop the whole website. I had to, like, figure out marketing plans. And I'm still not all the way where I'd want to be, like, right at this moment. Yeah. But I've made a lot of progress. And I've been able to sustain my life um, doing it. So, you know, it's not – I think it – and because we still have so much uncertainty, so, like – yeah. Right now, like right now, people are out in the city on the East Coast because it's warm. But what's going to happen in the fall? Like, right. are people going to want to be sitting in restaurants together? Like, I don't think so, honestly. Yeah. Um, so this is, I think, going to be more of a new normal for a while. I, I think at least another year. Um, so and even still, like later, because one of the great things and I'm, maybe you feel this way, too, about quarantine is like, I've become a lot closer, not to say I wasn't close, but a lot more, I've spent a lot more time with people like across the country than I ever would have been like friends. Cause we're all on zoom together all the time. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's kind of cool to be able to experience those sorts of things with people that you wouldn't necessarily go to their birthday party or you wouldn't like just stop by and say hi, but now you're a lot more inclined to do that. Yeah. And I think to your point, even if stuff does go back like to normal, I think there's still a place for, you know, yes, it's normal times we can fly and travel again, but I still can't make it to California for my mom's birthday. Mm -hmm. But something that, you know, while started in quarantine where there were so many restrictions, I still um, ability to, to still do this beyond. Yeah. What yeah. are people yeah. to develop this, this new leg of your business? As you said you kind of you had to move really fast with the website and promotions are there any particular tools or even like tips and so tools i use my i i have built my website since i've been building my website so squarespace i think is the best because i used to have a wordpress blog and squarespace is a lot more user friendly not to say that it is easy <laughs> it definitely gets it's frustrating yeah. i'm on squarespace too and i was like oh I'm so easy, da, 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 and now no, not that easy. It's sort of user friendly, but it's not that easy. It's easier than the other one that I use, but literally, I it'll take. Now I'm a little bit better. I've, I've had my website for like four years now, so now it's a little bit better. But literally, there's sometimes that I just walk away, like I can't do this right now. I need a break, and then I'll come back. So Squarespace, but I will say it's it is good. So Squarespace is good. Um, Canva has been like an invaluable resource because I have not had time to sit down and do Photoshop <laughs> or learn Adobe Photoshop. Probably in the last month, I've just learned of Canva and it's amazing. Yeah. It's so good um, to make any kind of template really to make like your emails look better. Yep. Um, I've been recently like during this time period, I've been learning more about email marketing. I use MailChimp but I'm not sure if it's the best because I still haven't like all the way deep dived into it. But, and I, most of the time I try to use the free, the free, and <laughs> the free version as long as possible. Although I do, I will say I pay for Canva. I think it's like twelve ninety nine a month okay. um, because you just have a lot more access to things. And if you don't pay for the monthly thing, um, you end up like paying per picture that you need, like stock photo. And I feel like that could get more expensive where I don't even want to think about it. Like whatever, twelve ninety nine for my business. So Canva is, it's kind of like 
bootleg Adobe Photoshop and um, <laughs> and it's getting a lot better. Like it's a lot, they've added a lot more photo editing features and things. Yeah. Um, it's not specifically for editing photos, but you can make like templates. A lot of the things like the things you see for real life cooking, the promos that uh, Nikki and I made today were made on Canva. And it's kind of like they have a lot of templates. You can like pop pictures in, change the fonts, and you can like kind of build your whole brand awareness on there, which is nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yes, they do have a free version. They do. Wrote. The free version. Um, and yes, Hannibal's back free. So it is. And I think, I don't know about Photoshop, but it reminds me a lot of InDesign. So it's having to take time creating layouts for, like Kat said, email or even. So they already put in the picture you want, you know, and for me, I think it's really, I know how to use InDesign, but I'm not a graphic designer mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've been a copywriter. And so, Yeah, it's a lot, like we were saying Squarespace is a great tool, but it's not so user friendly. Squarespace is very user friendly. It's very easy to figure out a lot faster than diving into, and those graphic design programs are expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot cheaper and a lot more user friendly, I found. Like, because when you're doing everything in your own business, like, I know like the proper way is like you take time and really, like, I, I just didn't have the time for this. In this particular time, I did not have the time to like, oh, let me learn Photoshop for like three months and then. <laughs> I'm in, a, in the midst of like, how am I gonna make money? And I can the recipes. Like, yeah, you don't have time to learn a design program either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's been really helpful. Um, I think those are the two, the three main things that have been the biggest tools that I've used during this time. Um, I really would like to learn more about like Instagram and email marketing. Um, because obviously you need to find new customers. You can't just keep asking your friends to like, Hey, take this class. <laughs> Even though I, ha I do have like new people coming in, it just is a lot slower than I would like it to be. Yeah. Um, so, but I do see progress for sure. Good. Good. TT is asking what we can expect from you for the rest of 2020. Um, so for the rest of 2020, I don't know. I'm going to continue to build the chef Lane virtual kitchen uh with the classes still continue the public classes um the private classes will always be offered the cool thing about private classes is literally if i'm have availability on my schedule i will take you so if you are in australia and you want me to wake up at three in the morning i will wake up at three in the morning <laughs> um i did a date night the other night at like 10 o'clock at night so like i if i have the availability i will take you whenever you want to do it nice. um I'm also planning, I used to do this thing called Lovers and Friends, well, you know. Uh, it was a dinner party, uh, R&B themed dinner party with family style dinner. I don't think anyone's gonna be comfortable with family style for a very long time. Probably not. Um, so I'm developing a new idea that I don't want to reveal, but just wait for it uh, towards the end of summer that kind of is a similar concept. And I have another business venture um, that I also can't reveal that is going to be towards the end of summer. <laughs> um, and it kind of combines uh, a dinner, like a sit down dinner and my virtual class element. So and I'm really excited about both of those things. Um, and I think, I think around fall, uh, people will want me back in their houses for some meal, weekly meal prep, at least like two clients. Um, but the cool thing, like Chris always points out, is I probably, if I continue to move in the way that I'm moving, I probably won't have to go back to people's houses, um, which is kind of cool. Like, I'm a real entrepreneur. I was, like, I was self-employed working for these people before, but now it's like I really am building my own thing, which is super cool. Yeah, your brand. Mm -hmm. Everyone make sure if you're not already following Chef Lean, follow her so we can get in. <laughs> So I actually want to take a step back for a minute. For those who don't know you and your story, can you share like your journey, how you first wanted to be a chef and the steps you took, jobs, everything to get you to where you are? Yeah, sure. So I have a really interesting story, I think. I um, I wanted to go to, I've always loved to cook. Like I was cooking pancakes from scratch at the age of four. 
I watched Food Network instead of cartoons. Um, Martha Stewart was my hero at like nine. Oh. Um, so I've always been this person. Like I was cooking dinner for the whole family, like in eighth grade. And not just like dinner, like not just spaghetti, but like, mom, yeah, we're having beef lettuce wraps tonight with a bowl. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and credit to my mom for allowing me to explore in the kitchen. And like, anytime I went to the grocery store, as long as it was like pseudo healthy, she would let me put it in the cart, um, which was really cool. Um, but anyway, so out of high school, I had an, um, like a crazy high GPA. I was kind of an overachiever. I don't know if that was really by choice. I just, I felt like there was no choice. Like I just had to achieve, like that was the household I lived in. All right, it's fine. <laughs> Um, like I had a crazy um, regimented schedule because I swam and I played water polo. I was in the IB program, which is like international baccalaureate. So I had like a 4.6 graduating from high school. Like I don't think I think I got like one B in math, which I that's why I'm just like I can't do math to this day. Like mm, I hate math. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I so I left high school. I didn't really actually have an interest in going to college. I wanted to go to culinary school, but my mom is a teacher and she was like. Absolutely not. <laughs> no so, college. <laughs> uh, you said what? She said no daughter of mine is gonna skip college. No, legit. Like she, <laughs> uh, my mom was really great. Like, well, my parents they saved for me to go to college. Like, they were planning on paying for me to go to college. Yeah. Um. So original, I wanted to get as far away from Southern California as possible. So I applied to New York. Didn't get in. Well, no, I didn't. I didn't. My application for NYU something was wrong. So so I didn't. I didn't even hear back from them. And then um, Syracuse I got into, but my mom was like, absolutely not. Like, we're not paying this out-of-state tuition. Plus, you've never lived a day of snow in your life. Like, you'll die. Um, so I went to – I also applied to Stanford, UC Santa Cruz, and UC Berkeley. Oh, and the small women's college was going to give me a swimming scholarship called Mills in Oakland. But – uh, I decided to go to UC Berkeley just because it was like, you know, the number one public university in the country, like kind of had to go there. Also, I didn't like, I honestly didn't care. I was just like, mm, whatever. Um, so I went to Berkeley. It was a bit of a culture shock going to college because I had such a regimented schedule in high school and going to such a huge school. It was like, who am I? What am I? Like, I, it was hard for me to find my group at first. Um, so I went through a lot of different majors at Berkeley. I thought I wanted to be a newscaster. No, when I went first went, I thought I wanted to go to school of business. I realized I hated business people because they were just like, I was like, who, I, I, I don't, I like the truth. And so many of them just seem like very, like, I don't know. I just didn't like it. All the rubbing elbows and things. It wasn't for me. <laughs> so um, then I, I became an AKA. And then that kind of changed my trajectory. I became AK sophomore year. Um, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and then that kind of changed everything because my whole focus didn't really matter about school anymore. It's more like AK activities, like, oh, these programs, which obviously is like more of my thing, right? Like I like creative producing things like that. Little things, all that. Exactly. So I did that for a little while. Then I was like, oh, but I need to graduate still. <laughs> I need to figure out how to get out of here. So I thought I was going to do psychology. I'm really interested in how the mind works. But then at Berkeley, you had to take way too many science classes. So I was like, heck no. Like, and people will, like compete at Berkeley, like in classes. Like you can get an A and you could still like get a B if you got a low A, lower A than like most of the rest of the class. Like it's insane. So then I was like, what can get me to graduate fastest? Decided to be a newscaster. Uh, so I got a degree in mass communications and then I graduated and then I graduated in the recession. So there was no jobs <laughs> and I didn't want to move to like Kansas and work my way up as a newscaster. Uh, also, I realized like I didn't, I didn't really want to be that. I just said that just to get a degree. So I didn't, I didn't know newscasting was once an aspirin. Really? Yeah, no, I thought like, oh, that could be fun. I, but again, Berkeley ruins everything. All our classes at Berkeley, they weren't, like, in the, like, we weren't, like, behind the camera really learning, like, meet, like, you know, on, on hand, on, on, what's, what's the word, like, on, what is the word, like, it was a hands-on, there we go, uh, it was, like, learning about theory of, like, news, and that's when I learned, like, 
seven companies control all the news. I was like, so why are we watching it? Like, again, I don't like lies. I didn't want to be part of that. I was like, this is stupid. Uh, and I, now I think it's like six or five companies. Okay. Um, so anyway, I was back at home in San Marino Valley, which is in Southern California in between LA and Palm Springs. And I decided, I don't know. I just, a lot of people were like, you've always liked to cook. Why don't you go to culinary school? It kind of sucked being back at home after being like free for like four years. Cause my parents are still pretty strict. And um, so I went to culinary school in LA and I did a seven month program, got out in seven months. And I loved every minute of culinary school, like more than anything else besides maybe swimming that I had ever done in my life. Uh, I never missed a day. I was only late the day after my 22nd birthday. <laughs> Uh, and I had class at six in the morning, so that was dedication to be on time all every single day. Early twenties, that's a definitely dedication. For sure. So and I kinda like lived out of my car because my parents live so far away from LA and the traffic is so bad. So like I made a lot of fast friends in LA. Like my, one of my really good friends to this day actually I met Titi around that time. Uh one of my other really good friends now, Kiana, I met her at a party and I was like, Oh, you live in Ecuador? Oh, okay, can I spend the night tonight? <laughs> and we're, we've been really good friends ever since. Like, it was really the kindness of others that got me through that time. Like, because yeah. it was just such a far drive to do that every single day. Right. Um, and then right out of culinary school, I applied to this job on Craigslist, and it happened to be with Will and Jada Smith, which I didn't know when I applied. What, I just, what did it say on Craigslist? It, it was like... <laughs> It was like high profile family is looking for a kitchen assistant. So I, uh, I applied, well, I applied cause I was like, I literally had, I wasn't even done with culinary school. I was like, maybe had a couple weeks left. I was like, I don't really qualify for this, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, just see what happens. Right. So I went on the interview and it was this like, not older, but like more mature, um, black woman that interviewed me and she didn't tell me who it was for either. Uh, and I, told her way too much information about my life. I told her like I was living on my car and like, you know, I really wanted this job. I really needed this job. <laughs> uh, um, and I remember she asked me like five different kinds of mushrooms. Cause like, you know, she was like, do you really know? Like, who are you? I don't really go to culinary school. Like exactly. So I told her and then I ended up getting the job there March 13th, 2010. It was my mom's birthday, my first day. Um, so my mom said that was the best present I could have ever given her. <laughs> um, and then I worked there for two and a half years. And I kind of I worked there, I was like, I became, I started as kitchen assistant, became breakfast chef, and really like, worked my way up to the point where I was kind of basically running the kitchen within two years, there's a lot of other management things that happened, but like people quit. And then it was just like me, it was, it was a lot of stuff that happened. Yeah. Um, but then I ended up leaving because there was no room for growth for me there. So I had to go. I was so sad. Oh. Before you go on to the next step, how was it working there? Like, did you have to at the pool? What was that like? No, so that's what people get mistaken, right? Like, when you work for rich and famous people, people think, like, you're their friend, like, hanging out. No. I was like, I mean, I wasn't like the help. Like, it was amazing working there. I love working there. Um, I actually think it inspired me to do so much in life because, like, working for Will and Jada, like, they were, like, the epitome of, like, great blackness, you know? Like, at the time, and even still today, like, just the way they think, just the way they're so open-minded, the way they care about the people that work for them. Okay. Um, it was just amazing to be 22 years old and seeing things done on such a high level. And they were black, like who like who got to just be around that amount of wealth and they were black right so it was awesome awesome experience um I wasn't their friends though also the woman that hired me the chef she was the chef uh which I stereotyped her I was like maybe she's like an assistant when I went on the interview with her because <laughs> she was like I, I feel so bad because people do this to me and they're like she's too pretty or like you know she couldn't be a chef like you, I don't know there's all kinds of stereotypes but um the woman that hired me when I got first got hired, she's like, be out of sight, like, out of sight, don't be heard. Like, it was a very high level of professionalism. Like, I wasn't hanging out, kicking it with them. Um, as I worked there longer, like, by the end, uh, 
like Will, I remember one time uh, Will was teasing me, and it took me so long to stop calling him Mr. Smith because I used to refer to them as Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Right. <laughs> but Will was teasing me. He was like, what's your name? Like, do you even work here? And I worked there like two years. He's like, why don't you ever talk? I was like, I don't know. Like, you told me not, not him, but I was told not to. So I just, I'm in the background, yeah. Um, but I really appreciate that because it gave me, that's how I've continued to carry myself in other people's homes. And I think people really appreciate it because when you're hired as a domestic worker, like you're not hired to be their friend. Like yeah. you, you are hired to be in the background and to provide food. And you know, as the, the relationship in domestic households always teeters on the line of professional and personal, but literally it's a job. So you always need to be professional. <laughs> um, recently I was at, uh, well, I was just at someone's house who had a private chef and the girl, the girl that was a private chef was just so unprofessional. I was like, what is she doing? Like, she was like in sweats, like not to say she couldn't cook, but I was just like, this is not how you maintain or build a brand or business. Like, cause people are going to have this perception of you. So that was a really big cornerstone and foundation in how I've carried myself through every job in life. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. So you said you had to leave. You Time is going. We only have like 15 minutes. I know. Instagram's <laughs> a hater. Okay. So sorry. Go on. Continue your story. Oh, so then that I left. I was sad. I cried. It was some drama. That's like a no whole nother Instagram life story. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, but nothing that I did. It was just drama. Yeah. And then I worked at a couple jobs. Like I worked at a restaurant in Venice Beach. Learned I hated restaurants. Worked at a rehab house. That was like weird. People coming off of drugs. Um, and I was also put in another precarious situation there because the chef that hired me left like within two weeks. He was like, oh yeah, I hired you and I'm leaving. So when he left, the kitchen was a disaster. I knew it was a disaster, but I was just in the background. I wasn't in charge. Right. So when he left and the kitchen was a disaster, the main like head of the rehab house was like, what's wrong with everything? I was like, yo, this has been like this since this guy worked here. <laughs> like this is not my fault, but there was always some tension because I, I don't know why he blamed me. It was probably easier to blame me. Yeah. Um, so I left that job pretty quickly. And then that's when I just decided to move to New York, 2013. I always say it was the worst year of my life, but honestly, maybe it was the best year of my life because it, uh, it provoked all this change in me moving to New York. And since moving to New York, I've really like owned my own voice, owned my own brand. I've really only worked for myself. Like, I remember when I first met you, remember I was only working two days a week and just like living this amazing <laughs> world otherwise. It's traveling. Exactly. Like I've lived this amazing life of freedom since I was 25. Um, and actually today I was thinking about, cause three years ago I worked on the cruise ship, which is when I made another like random pivot. Yep. And around this time, three years ago is when I started working on the cruise ship. Yep. So uh, that was another, I just made like all these leaps and bounds and like random leaps of faith, like moving to New York with nothing, sleeping on my two best friends couches. Like, but I feel like it's just been, everything has just always worked out because I just kind of believe that it's going to. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it also seems like that's even like you're meant to you're to work on the cruise ship like all these opportunities to me they happen and things fall into place it's because it's meant to be yeah for sure even like even as chris likes to point out even covid happening like i was probably getting comfortable and like oh just working for these people and i'm making good money and now it's it was literally a push like nope we're ripping the carpet the <laughs> universe is ripping the carpet underneath from out underneath you and now what are you gonna do so now that's how i began to build you know my brain like really build it i think yeah what are some things that you have thought of as you've been building your brand? You know, one of the things, personally, I don't know if I've told you this, but one of the things I admire about you is I think that hmm, you seem to have very good brand. How you present yourself and all of that. So are there certain things you keep in mind? When I have my own about certain things as you Wait, you said, do I think about certain things as what? As you've been building your brand, are there certain, you know, goals? Yes. So the main overarching goal has always been to be in food media. 
Uh, because growing up, I told you I watched the Food Network a lot, but there's no one ever on TV that cooked like me, that looked like me. And still, even now, there's not any, well, not, I won't say any, yeah. but there's not a lot of black or brown people that aren't cooking, like, ethnic-type food, right? Like, why is it that so-and-so can cook regular salmon and every brown or black person is cooking, like, curry salmon or smothered salmon or, like, and I grew up in California, so I didn't eat like that. Yeah. So there's still not a lot of representation in that aspect. Like everything is so cultural when you're black, which is like ridiculous because we're Americans. Like not to say like the history and there isn't culture, but that's not everyone, you know? Yep. And I feel very strongly about that because I grew up in California. So I don't really feel as attached to any sort of like Southern or like Caribbean or anything of that nature. Um, so food media, uh, I really, I, I've just, I've, recently just decided I want to write a cookbook, uh, which everyone has always told me to, yes. but I've just been like, it's too much. But I think that is something that can live on and also another stream of income. Um, and it's like something tangible that people can have. Yep. Uh, but yeah, food media, writing a cookbook and like just literally teaching people how to cook. Like I just really love doing that. Eventually at right before COVID, we were looking at opening up a space. Uh, maybe maybe this was another blessing in disguise because we didn't sign anything and we didn't move forward with that. But opening up some sort of like community space where I can teach classes, um, not only to people that can afford them, but even just like people in the neighborhood uh, that maybe can't afford them or kids. I really like teaching kids. There's like nothing better than like seeing a kid delight in like how, hap like how what they made. They're like, oh my God, I made this. Um, even one of the kids I've worked for for a long time or her family, uh, we get, we started getting really intricate with our cooking projects. She was like, let's make passion fruit mousse. Let's make this. I'm like, what? Where did you hear of this? <laughs> so just like kind of stay in the course. And I, I think I am kind of here to just kind of be a light and inspire people. Because for whatever reason, I'm able to just continue to be resilient and continue to keep pushing and still like maintain a generally good attitude. Which I didn't realize, like, not a lot of people do. <laughs> Wait, I can't hear you. I don't know if you could hear that with the siren. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I agree with what you said, and you're also very good at bringing people together. And I think... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another thing I really like to do, which is why, like, when I started Lovers and Friends, that was really fulfilling to me. Because I do like to connect people and make everyone friends. Like, I think that is another one of my, like, roles in life, to just, like, make everyone just a little bit more soft or a little more, you know, <laughs> friendly. Yeah. Okay, time is running out, but people want to know about your Chopped experience. How was that? How oh, my goodness. How did you get on the show? And then how was it? So Chopped, you can actually apply for, okay. uh, and then they choose you. Obviously, it's TV, so you need to fit into some sort of storyline. So I think the first episode I was on, the Chopped Irish episode, season 37, episode one, if you want to check it out, I haven't seen it. Uh, it uh, yeah, season 37, episode one, I, I was the Irish person that didn't look Irish. Like, no one looks at me and thinks I'm Irish. Yeah. So I was kind of the dark horse of that episode. This last season, which was Chopped Champions, uh, I don't know why they put me on there, but I'm, I, I was grateful. You I will say the second time that I was on, on the show, I was a lot more afraid than the first time because, you know, like defending a title is a lot more scary than keeping a title or than, than just originally getting it. Right. Also, it was like other people, like the guy that touched my things, if you saw the episode, he like one chopped like three different times. He was he is so arrogant. I don't know. Uh, so, like flinching. Like what? Why is he touching her food? In fact, I haven't seen her chop champions episode from this year. Oh, I don't honestly I don't even know because I was just like meh, meh. <laughs> I didn't win. No need to watch it. <laughs> but he was she was like, but I didn't say I needed help. Like it was a whole thing. 
so they made a huge thing on set about that and i wish now i had been because i was irritated yeah but i wasn't like i was just like whatever like i'm not gonna let him get it because he was like oh i would have helped him i would have helped the guy if he was next to me i was like no you wouldn't have right like and the other i don't know it was it was some drama but he didn't win either so that's okay <laughs> and i walked away my favorite like the one of the best compliments i've gotten as a chef was from scott conant and he said that I have the innate ability to create flavor where none existed before. So I thought that I was like, I was like, I won. We could turn this off now. <laughs> and, and not just that you got that compliment, but like on national television. Exactly. Endorsement. So that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, it was just Chopped Kitchen is crazy and it's hard and scary, but I'm so glad I did it again because it kind of re reignites like my passion and I am pretty competitive. Uh, and it just keeps you, challenges just keep you on your toes, right? You just keep going, keep doing, you can't, you're, you'll just stay the same if you never challenge yourself. Right. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I have so many experiences I want to ask you about, like the cruise ship. Okay, we have four minutes, probably closer to three. <laughs> Talk about the cruise ship, because like you said, that was a pivot. And it's, it's probably by yourself, at the time, you were more of a private chef in home. Mm -hmm. and I, traveled girl to work on this cruise ship like how was that experience that was another thing i was really excited about about but also terrified um but because of my swimming background and just like being pre i like to be prepared i'm not someone and i think that's what took me so long to become com confident in like building my brand and things because i don't want to be giving people things that i'm faking my way through something yeah. so like when i had to do the demos on the cruise ship i literally used to study i had just met chris at the time so I used to tell him all the facts I know. We would be on the phone for hours. I was like, oh, did you know Parmesan cheese has this thing called blah, 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 and, like, prosciutto is the thigh of a pig? And, and he was like, I don't want to hear any more food facts. Well, actually, no, we just started dating, so he was, like, really nice about it. But then, like, three months in, he was like, all right, I'm good with the food <laughs> But, no, he was a really good sport um, when it came to, like, listening. Because I really didn't want to look dumb on stage. Like, I'm not someone that can just – fake my way through things. If I'm talking about something, I really know it. And I want people to respect that and know that about me. Mm -hmm. um, but besides the job on the cruise ship, if I was 21, I would have stayed on that cruise ship forever. That was the best job I've ever had. <laughs> it was so fun. Like I worked for four hours a day and then I would just hang out in really cool places yeah. with all these international people and met all these new friends, go hiking in Alaska, swimming in Hawaii. Like it was, it was amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. Incredible. Well, time is running out. Actually, I have one more question regarding spritzer. If you guys did make it, the recipe is on Instagram. So my syrup is really hard in the bottom of this left. Can I, re I think if you add more water, could I try adding more water and reheating it? Out? To the actual spritzer? No, the syrup itself. The rest of it that's in the pot. Or is it oh, yeah. Yes. That, yes. Do that exactly. The rest of the syrup in the pot. Okay. So add water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you basically made rose candy because it solidified. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, you can't see it, but it's literally just, like, in the bottom of the glass, just, like, hanging. <laughs> you made a rose Jolly Rancher. Yeah. Like, sticky, it's great, but it's, you know. Whatever. Well, thank you so much for your time, and it's been great. Thank you. Me too. Last, like, words of wisdom that you want to share with anyone watching? Uh, Just do it when you feel like it, and even when you don't, still do it. <laughs> Because that's all. You just got to keep going. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Talk to you later. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me on. Bye. No problem. Bye, guys.